It's so good to be back with you. It's hot today, but I don't know what it is. I feel like just pushing through today. Is that all right? I want to thank our band for doing a great job. It's actually hotter on the stage than where you're sitting. I want to thank Alex for drumming that hard. That's like drumming in a hot place. Very hot place. That's what it's like. So glad you're here. Uh, if I haven't met you yet, it's going to be a good Sunday. I'm Mark, and uh, we're going to open up the Bible this morning. At Ocean's Church, we believe that God speaks in many ways. When you get married, he'll speak through your spouse. Come on, all the men said amen. And uh, he'll speak to you. He can speak to you with a dream or a vision. He can speak to you through a prophetic word. We don't put prophecy on the same level as Scripture, but God can speak to you through a prophetic word. And uh, we also believe, though, that his predominant way of speaking to you is through the Bible. You want to know what God thinks? You read this book. Someone dies, you want to know what they left you? You read their, and this is the will of God. People say, what's the will of God? It's right here. We know what God's will is. We know what he wants you to have. We, want, we know what he, do, what he doesn't want you to have. We know what belongs to you and what doesn't belong to you. It's a testament, right? It's a living testament of what God desires for his kids. And so this morning, we're going to open up God's will. Is that all right? We're going to turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and I'm going to read a few passages here this morning. It was funny because I was trying to wrestle away from this passage, and uh, it seems like every time I try to wrestle away from a passage, there's someone that comes up to me at the end of a service and says, that passage you read means everything to me. So I wasn't planning, I was trying to preach out of Acts 16 today because I like preaching stories better. And he said, no, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, stick to these verses. So I read the verses, and at the end of the service, I only read four verses today, preached out of those verses. And afterwards, I met a first-time visitor. He, his son was here, his wife was here, they were all touched. And he came up to me and he said, this is our first time today. He says, I don't know why you preached out of that verse, but it's the only Bible verse I have tattooed on my arm. I thought, okay, Lord, you win. We'll do what you say. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, you ready to go? I want to talk to you, kind of an idea today. It's been stirring in me all week. Uh, it's a message, I believe, for my family. I believe it's a message for our staff, our college, and guess what, our church. I actually think it's a message for the church of California right now. I, I saw the Lord as I was praying this week, almost like when you show up early to a bakery. Who's ever showed up early to a bakery? Where's my early birds in here? Where's the people like me that gets jet lagged every once in a while? Only time I wake up at four is when I'm coming back from Africa. People think I'm an early bird. I'm just jet lagged severely. But you show up to a bakery, a donut shop, don't judge me. And you get there early, and you get there early enough to see the owner of the place grab the sign from closed to open. And I almost saw the Lord this week getting ready to shift something from things being closed to things being open. Who likes it when God opens stuff up? Anybody like when God opens stuff up? And I just felt like I wanted to announce to you again, I'm going to kind of just, they say teachers tell it, preachers yell it. I'm going to yell it today. Is that all right? I just heard, I, I could hear it all week long just saying, God, I'm telling you, I'm getting, I heard God telling me, uh, things are getting ready to go open. I don't know if you've ever been to a small town that shuts down at like 2 p.m. You ever been to a town like that? You're like, let's go to a ski town and everything shuts down at 2. You're, you're, you're non-voluntarily fasting because there's no restaurants open, no grocery stores open. Like, what do these people do for food? It's all shut down. There's no DoorDash. You're in trouble. And I've been to these environments. It's no fun when things are closed. And I just, I think there's been people that have had hearts that have been closed. There's been spouses that have been closed. There's been bosses in your life that have been closed down towards you. There's been miracles you've been asking for, but it seemed like you've been getting a close sign. But I almost felt like in the spiritual realm this week, on Thursday, our church prayed. And it was almost like I saw God shifting the sign from closed to open. And he gave me a verse I want to share it with you this morning out of 1 Corinthians 16. Paul is talking here. I'm going to begin reading in verse 8. He says, I'm going to stay a little bit longer in Ephesus. Where is he staying? 
Incidentally, Ephesus would become one of the greatest churches of the first century. Paul would spend about three years in Ephesus. He would build a church that would change the region. So much so, the economic status of Ephesus changed drastically. It went from a pagan, idol-worshiping center, so much so that everybody that built the idols began to riot because they were out of business. The people that were silversmiths that worked with the metals to build statues to Diana, they began to revolt because they went out of idol building business there was such a move of God it shifted the spiritual climate of the city Paul says I I came to Ephesus I'm staying a little bit longer for a great someone say great Great. the word in the in the Greek language that it's originally written in is the word megos or mega it's where we get the word huge who thinks it's going to be huge It's a massive, huge, a great and effective, the word effective means unique, a great and effective door. Someone said to me, door. The word in the Greek is thorough. It's a Greek word for a door, but Paul uses it here as a metaphor to describe a large, unique opportunity. I don't know who you are today, but I need every eye to look upon me for a second. I want to point at you for a second with my preacher finger. I believe that God has a large, unique opportunity. The weird part is God is so big that it's, it's, it's different for each one of us. For some of you, it's your health, a unique, large opportunity. For others of you, it's with your child, a unique, large opportunity. Someone in here, you've been praying for something to change, shift, a unique, large opportunity. Can, can I get an amen from someone that's hot today? I know that the normal response when you're hot is to try not to die. But I need you to stay alive. Is that all right? Lean in and uh, stay with me this morning. So it says this, a large, a unique, a massive door of opportunity has been opened to me. And there is, met, there is much adversity or there is much uh, obstacles, uh, adversaries to what this great, effective, large door is. He goes on and talks about his son Timothy in the faith, Apollos. And then he goes on, he says, and if you're going to steward the door, the large, unique door of opportunity, here's what you got to do. Verse 13, it's the verse that was on our friend's forearm today. Verse 13 says, therefore, I need you, if you want to steward this, to watch. Someone say watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave, be strong, and let everything that you do be done with love. This is the way that we steward God, open doors. I'll say it again. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be be strong. Let all that you do be done with what? Let's pray this morning. God, we love you. We believe that you're opening up big, large, unique, massive doors. Doors of opportunity, doors of impact, favor. Doors that would touch the hearts of our loved ones, touch our own hearts. I even believe this morning you're opening up the hard-hearted heart. You're opening up the stony heart. You're opening up the weed overgrown heart. And this morning we believe that you're sowing good seeds into a soft, open heart. I pray this morning for anyone that has a spirit of infirmity, I pray that this would be a day that you'd break off that spirit. Spirit of divination, break it off in this atmosphere. We're praying for anyone that needs direction that you're sending your angel. You're going to be with them and lead them into prosperity. We believe this morning, God, that you're for us. And if you be for us, who be against us? Uh, be against us. We ask that you would open up the windows of, of heaven wide. In Jesus Christ's name and all of God's kids said a good old-fashioned. I like to open things. I don't know. I'm, I'm a millennial, so I kind of get excited to open up a text message sometimes. I like to open up an email if it's from the right people. Can I get an amen? I like to see that my package has been delivered. Who loves that email? I like to open up those Amazon packages when they show up. Kind of feels like Christmas. I like to open up a a full gallon of milk when I have a brand new bag of cereal. Can I get someone that's honest enough to say amen? I don't eat cereal very often anymore, but I grew up because we were brainwashed and thinking that eating uh, cornflakes with sliced bananas was somehow good for you. We know better now. But I remember growing up, there's just something about peace of mind. I was a happy camper. You give me something that was full, a full 
milk jug with a full bag of cereal. You open that bag of cereal. I would just, I would say I have one complaint. I have a million dollar idea number 750 in my head. I would like the guys from the cereal plant to get a hold of somebody at the Ziploc factory. Can we agree on that today? I'm like, I don't know how we haven't solved this problem yet. Bags of chips, talk to Ziploc. Frito-Lay and whatever the cereal company is needs to talk to Ziploc. Can I get an amen? But you open up that bag and it's like, all right, there's freedom, there's excitement. You're, you're, gonna, you're in a good spot. You're a happy camper. I was thinking about this week, the idea of how God made us to celebrate when things open up. I was thinking about this idea in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians that Paul says that God opened up a very large, unique opportunity, a door. He opened it up. What's interesting is he says that wasn't just a, a problem-free door. I have found that if you want to do something great with God and for God, that there will be great opportunities, great open doors, but simultaneously there will be obstacles. I think many people believe that if they serve God, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be basically, uh, they'll get a pass from storms. They won't deal with adversity. They won't deal with the currents of culture. But I want you to know that anyone that wants to do something great for God will not only have opportunity, but there will be obstacles. But be of good cheer, for we have a God that overcomes the world. Amen. I was thinking about all the windows. I studied the windows and the doors of the Bible, the gates of the Bible. It says that we serve a God that opens up the iron gates. He opens up the heavenly doors. That he's actually God that says, if any of you want something to ask, to keep on asking, to knock and to keep on knocking. And it says God will open up the the doors. It says that God, behold, he stands at the door and he knocks. And if we would open up that God would enter in. It says the judge stands at the door. It says in Revelations that God will open up doors that no man could shut and he would shut doors that no man could open. But this morning, I just wanted to declare this over your life that I believe that we're getting ready to enter into a season of our life that God is going to help us open up some big doors. That's what I felt strong this week, is this will be a God opening up the door kind of season. I want to let you know that there is a God in heaven that has the keys to every lock. Do you know what doors give you? They give you access. I think one of the reasons why God wants to swing wide something open is there's areas that you have not had access to that I feel strong as a church God wants to give us access to. There are cities, there are people groups, there are demographics that I believe God is inviting us in to access. Some of you don't realize that there is a God in heaven that will elevate you with open doors to access things you've never touched before. Felt it strong this week. Most people never step into the doors that God opens. I think it's because, number one, they don't realize that God has the keys. And if they do know that God has the keys, some people don't realize that God opens the doors, but he gives us a responsibility. There is an action that's required to use God's keys. I meet single people that say, God's going to provide my Boaz. They got curlers on their hair. They don't leave the house. You got to get outside to actually position yourself with the, to, to step into the keys that God would give you. People saying, God's going to give me a great job, and you haven't filled out a resume. You haven't updated your resume. No, I believe that God goes with goers. He does with doers. That God isn't looking for a bunch of people that have great faith with no actions. Bible I read says that faith without works is what? It doesn't say it's under, under attack. It says it's dead. There is something that God expects from us. Action is required to use God's keys. It's interesting that God opened up a great, Paul describes it as a unique a massive, effective opportunity in Ephesus. But it's interesting that simultaneously says there was some obstacles connected to it. He actually took, if you read uh, Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 14, you will find that Paul's great and effective door of opportunity actually was riddled with some challenges. I think sometimes we think that if we're in the will of God, there won't be any headwinds. You want to make the world happy? Go buy a Handles franchise. You scoop up Graham Central Station, everyone's smiling. But if you want to stand up for truth, represent salt and light, whether you're an attorney, a school teacher, or a nurse, you better believe there will be some headwinds sometimes. 
Paul actually steps in. He actually steps out, takes action, and goes through some of the doors that God opens up. I think most people don't see the openings of God because they don't realize that every God open door is actually to reach or impact people. Most people have no problem hustling. Most people want to grind out their careers. They're working hard to build a name, to build a brand. And I'm not saying any of that stuff is bad. But I want to remind you as Christians, the greatest commodities in the world is not found in the ground with oil. It's not found in a Swiss bank account overseas. And it's not found in Fort Knox in some gold reserve. You heard me, you heard me right. The greatest natural resource on the planet is humanity. You know why God opens up doors for you? Every door that God opens is always connected to impacting somebody. God doesn't want us to build a brand or a castle. He wants us to build a kingdom and declare a king. Some of you are sitting and waiting for God to open up the next opportunity. And some of you haven't passed the last test that he told you to pass. We know that God is not a mean God. When we fail the test, he's not mad to give you an F, but he'll give you the test over again until you pass it. Some of you don't realize that the, do the door he wants to open is a door of favor. It's a door of opportunity. But listen, it's to be leveraged to reach more people. These doors pertain to gospel opportunities. I want you to know there's only two things you can't do in heaven is you can't sin. And you can't tell people about Jesus that don't yet already know him. I think one reason you're sucking oxygen today. I would suggest that's not the first. Amen? Is it hot in here or just me? I tried a new facial moisturizer. That didn't pan out today. Clog my pores. Amen? Pray for me. You know, I was thinking about this idea that there's open doors. Are you still with me today? There's open doors that God is telling Paul he's opening wide. He's like, God, who opened the door? It was God. What kind of door was it? It was massive. It was a unique. It was a door of opportunity. And guess what? Connected to the opportunity was people. And he realized that every great door that God opens for a church, every great door God opens for a businesswoman, every great door God opens for a man is actually not a door just for them. It's a door for people. God cares deeply for the people that you and I, some of you are more concerned in investing in your 401k than you are your neighbor. That 401k won't last forever. Your neighbor will. Some of you in here, you're planning more for your retirement than you are for your eternity. I don't want to save more money than I save people. I think it's a great prayer. Lord, let me save more people in my life, make a difference in more people's lives than I save dollars for the retirement. God opportunities, write this down, aren't just to reach people. I believe the opportunities and the doors, they will sometimes have obstacles. I told our staff this week that every obstacle has an opportunity. And every opportunity has an obstacle. The problem with most Christians is God will give them a great opportunity, but it's dressed in overalls and it's called hard work. We think that when God does something great, it's going to be easy. There is no promise that destiny comes easily. I don't know if you know this, but it says, well done, good and servant. He didn't just do it well. He got it done. There's a lot of people that do it well for a season, but they don't get it done. I think God rewards those that don't just do it well, but they get it, yeah. They don't, they don't just do it well. They don't just get it done. They do it faithfully. They don't just realize they're doing it well, not just getting it done, not just doing it faithfully, but they live to be a servant. I love the scripture in Acts 13, I believe it is. It says that David served the purpose of God in his generation. The idea is, uh, is a ship that has a deck on top with rowers underneath. And the word served his generation means David got underneath everybody else and he served the purpose of God. He actually helped push everybody on the deck forward. Some of you think that greatness is being served. No, greatness is doing the serving. God will open a door for you if you'll spend it on somebody else. We got a lot of selfish people that are miserable. Because they get the house, they get the car, they get the spouse, and they're still empty. Because they think that the doors God gave them to walk through are just for them.
God gave you influence for a purpose. And quite frankly, I was with some business guys this week. They said, Mark, what's one of the things that hurts your heart in business communities? I said, it grieves me to think that the, that the church thinks the only way to be sec- successful is to do it like Babylon does it. We think that we have to compromise to be great. We think that we can't really reach the world if we're not like the world. I don't think that I have to drink like you, cuss like you, talk like you, live like you to reach you. Can I get an amen? It's as though the reach trying to reach the unreached became unreached themselves. I don't want it to be said of me. I don't think that you have to be like the world to reach it. How do you know? Because Jesus wasn't like it. And everybody loved Jesus. Jesus wasn't crazy, but the crazy people loved him. Jesus wasn't a drunkard, but the drunkards loved him. Jesus wasn't hooking up with prostitutes, but the prostitutes... Are you hearing me today? Sick people loved the healthy Savior. So I don't believe the lie that we have to become sick to reach the sick. And by the way, if you reach people and they never change, did you really reach them? God gave me a revelation that when we have a seeker-sensitive church that's void of power, it's kind of like the similarity of having a seedless watermelon. It tastes good. It's enjoyed in the moment, but there's no generational potential there. And after one generation, the potential of that watermelon is gone. You know why? Because it takes the black seeds in that watermelon to reproduce. Christianity without the power of the Spirit of God does not have the power to reproduce. That's why you can gather a crowd but never see them turn into a church. There is a big difference between a crowd and a church. A crowd is a bunch of people trying to enjoy a cruise line of Christianity when a church is a battleship taking ground in the kingdom of God. I'll say amen to myself. That's good preaching today. I don't care if it's 100 degrees. I've learned that God opportunities have obstacles. One of my mentors said that the opportunity of a lifetime has to be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Most people don't realize that God will give you open doors. It's interesting, I was studying this out, open doors. It's wild that he opens up doors in Acts 14 and 13. And it's funny that he says this, that God opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. You read about his trips, it wasn't without problems. He got stoned more than some of you guys did. (laughs) We're in California, that's saying a lot. He got shipwrecked. He got beaten. He got left for dead. But he says, God opened up some great opportunities. Can you imagine someone today saying, man, I got, I got fired, I got canceled, I got, I got boycotted, they took my social media account, but God's opened up some great effective doors. This is the Apostle Paul. He's like, I went through some crazy stuff, but it was God. God was in the o- opposition. God was in the obstacles. God gave me an open door even though it was crazy. And I believe that we serve a God that, listen, we might go through some storms, but we'll get through the storms. Most people don't realize that open doors have obstacles. And though God opened a door that was great and effective, there was still many adversities. I think that one of the crazy parts you read in Colossians 4 is it says Paul requested while he's in prison, he's writing a book from prison, and here's what he writes. Pray for me that an open door for the word. It's wild. I don't know if you, if you were incarcerated, if you would be praying that God would open up a door for the word of God to be preached in the prison. I think most of us would be praying for an open door for us to get out. Is that just me? If I'm in prison, I'm like, hey guys, Ocean's Church, pray. I'm not built for this place. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your boy. But Paul's not praying like that. He says, pray that while I'm in the prison, the word would come. I think sometimes we're asking us to get out of the places God wants us to influence. Pray for me. Pray for me that an open door of effective gospel presentation would come while I'm still working at the job I don't like. Pray for me that while I'm in a bad marriage right now that's not healthy, that God will give me the words of life to change myself, and in God changing me, maybe he could change my spouse. 
I think many people, they, they want exits for things that God wants them to influence. See, most of the time we face a scary situation, and we don't realize that God, God will give you the grace to get through that thing. Every obstacle has an opportunity. Remember that. And every opportunity has an obstacle. It's interesting that you read through this, and uh, he gives us some instructions as I finish this up. Last, the last couple thoughts here. I'll get you out of here. As he says this, verse 13, he says, watch, therefore. I need you to watch, stand firm in the faith, be brave, be courageous, and be strong. And why do you do that? I want you to do everything that you do in love. I think most people don't see God's doors stay open long enough for them to walk through it because they don't follow the advice of verse, cha- verse 13 of chapter 16. First thing we got to do as Christians, I'm going to be honest, it's very, it's very hard to do, is he says to watch. Someone say watch. The Greek word means to be a guard. You know what prison guards do? They make sure the, the wrong people don't get out and the other people don't get I believe most people don't walk into their God-given purpose because they, they don't guard what goes out of their mouth and what comes into their eyes and their ears. While we're on it, I want to tell you that when churches go through storms, there's some churches right now in headlines that are going through some difficulties in other states. I want you to know there's two types of Christians. You will take on the posture of either the accuser of the brethren in Revelations 12, or you will take on the posture of the intercessor, our Christ. Romans 8, 34. What do you do when Christians or leaders or churches go through storms? You have two choices. Will I be like the devil and accuse? Or will I be like Jesus and pray? I want Ocean's Church to hear me clearly. We will pray for people in storms. We won't accuse them. There's too many people that are quick to cannibalize their own. I don't know why, but Christians seem to be the meanest people when people go through storms. I'm like, Job, you call those people your friends? Who needs enemies when you got friends like yours? And it's interesting that that God didn't do something great and Job heal him until he prayed for his friends. There's something that powerful that comes when we pray for people when they're in a closed door season. The truth is, God closes doors for everybody, and he can open doors for anyone. Some people say, well, you must have sin in your life because there's a closed door. I don't believe that closed doors equate God's not blessing you. Job was a righteous man, and he went through hell. Joseph, a righteous man, went through hell hell. Daniel was in the same sentence, God bragging about the righteousness of Noah, the righteousness of, of, of uh, Job, and the righteousness of Daniel. These guys had God bragging about how clean they were. And this guy who lived a clean life was thrown into a lion's den. I don't think that closed doors equate God not being with you. I just think that when we see someone go through a closed door season, you have two choices. Do you accuse? Can I ask you, Orange County, are you going to be an accuser? You know what the major spirit that's in Orange County? There's, two th- there's three spirits that I've discovered in Orange County that aren't in Boise. They're not in other cities. Three strongholds of Orange County, you know what they are? Greed, lust, and gossip. These are the three dark spirits of this region. You know why? Because rich people are usually powerful. Powerful people are usually successful. And success will breed this thing called pride. We think we have everything figured out. I'm right, they're wrong. My view's right, their view's wrong. Too too real today? (laughs) Ocean's Church. Are we going to be like the devil and accuse? Or are we going to be like Christ and pray? So when you hear about a church that's going through a hard time, and someone says, hey, what do you think about Pastor so-and-so? I'm praying for him. What do you think right now about what's going on in that bad situation? I'm praying for him. We don't need anybody else with rocks in their hands. There's a devil with demons. They got plenty of rocks. 
Let not the church throw the devil's rocks. It's good preaching today. My heart's grieved by seeing what's happened in these other states. I would tell you today that if you're going to walk through God's door, someone say watch. you got to guard what you look at, guard what you listen to, and then guard what comes out of your lips. Is life or death on your tongue? Is blessing or cursing on your lips? Your words are nuclear. You'll destroy cities like bombs or you'll power cities like a power plant. What kind of words are coming out of your lips? He says watch, be on guard. How do you do that? Stand firm in the faith. How do you stand firm in the faith? It's like a wide receiver catching a football. You know you're going to get hit, but you refuse to lose your focus. Stand firm. I'm going to catch this thing. We're going to make progress. Stand firm in the faith. He doesn't just say to stand firm in the faith. He says you got to be brave. Do you know that you can be full of faith and not be brave? That's why over and over again he says be strong in the grace. He says do not be fearful. Do not be afraid. Only be strong and courageous. Do you know that you can be brave, but still not be strong? That's why he says to be strong and courageous. Uh, having courage without having strength is like my dog. He's got courage, but when he's, when he's, when he's messing with those Rottweilers, I'm like, Mickey, bro, come on. You're about to get bullied. You're going to make both of us look bad. I'm going to have to come to your rescue. I'm going to get bit because the fight you're trying to start. Because you got some serious courage, Mickey, but you don't have the muscle mass of a Rottweiler. You're a mini sheep -a doodle Some of you, I feel like the Lord's proud that you're courageous, but I'm telling you that courage without preparation is weak. You gotta build. You know what he says? He says, I want you to, I want you to be strong, brave, or be brave, and then I want you to be strong. The Greek word is like a current tense, adding strength. It would be the way that you and I would say, he's going to the gym and getting stronger and stronger. That's the idea here. He says, be brave, but also be stronger and stronger. I want you to know the church, the doors that God is opening for us is going to require us to be strong and it's going to require us to be brave. Do you know that fear has two meanings? Fear is an acronym. It only has two ways to go with fear. In fear, you'll forget everything and run. Fear. F-E-A-R. You'll either forget everything and run or you'll face everything and rise. Oceans Church, I want you to know that we're not going to be a forget everything and run. We're going to face everything and rise. Can I get an amen from someone in the back? Almost done here. He says to be brave, to be strong. Strength does not come always from winning. Sometimes it's your struggles that develop your strength. When you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that's where muscles are built. And he says, once you're strong, once you're brave, once you stand firm, once you guard what's going on, lastly, remember this. Everything that God opens up for you, do it in love. Do it in love. I have friends, man, I know guys, I would say they're not close friends. I have, I have acquaintances in the body of Christ. They are truthers. They are pro-truth. I love the fact that they're vocal with their beliefs. I'm grateful that they're loud on that side of the body of Christ because there's a lot of people on the other side that are just crazy. We need some loud people on this side. But I would just say to be super loud with truth with no love turns a lot of people off. And I'm not in any way suggesting that they should turn down the truth. I just think that we need to turn up the love. I would say the louder the truth, the stronger I thought about this with my kids. When, I, when I'm parenting my kids, I think, if I have to bring a stronger correction, I have to be extra intentional with building them up before and after. Does that make sense? With our staff, when I don't have to correct somebody, I'm gonna go, okay, this is gonna be a strong correction, so I have to build them up extra on the front side and on the back side. My father-in-law used to call it the sandwich technique. It's bread with love, it's, the bread's called love. And you get one piece of bread and you love the heck out of them. You're incredible. You're amazing. This is what I love about you. This is what I see for your future. And after you build them up, then you deal with the meat of it. 
and I don't get mad these, I try not to get mad these days. I try to just say this, help me understand. That's a great phrase. That'll save some employees for some of you guys. That'll save some of your kids. Rather than going, what were you thinking, bonehead? You go this, help me understand. Why my DoorDash bill? Help me understand. And rather than accusing, you're inquiring. I have found that the stronger the correction, the greater the love that's needed. I have found that people only go negative when you try to take more out of them than you deposit it. People are just like a checking account. If you, if you take more out withdrawal than you have deposited, what happens to your checking account? They call it going, going, yeah, broke. That's part of it, yeah, part of it too. <laughs> Someone's like, that's real talk, preacher. <laughs> no, your account goes negative. You have a negative balance. No one likes seeing their balance when it has that dash before the numbers. They're like, I don't know what that looks like, but that's not good. You know what happened is you pulled more out. You spent more than what was in there. And, and Paul says, look, I'm going to open a big door. This door is going to be huge. It's going to be unique. It's going to be great. It's going to be to impact people. And the only way that you're going to be able to steward it well is if you stand guard, stand firm in the faith, to be brave, to be strong. And when you do that, do all of it in love. Because we all heard it said, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. People will always remember the way that you treated them. They'll remember how they felt. He felt like he was always too busy. Nothing worse than talking to someone when their eyes are like behind you. I can't stand, when I go to conferences sometimes, I'm talking to people, I can't stand it when they're like trying to jockey. I was at a movie premiere just recently, I'm talking to this guy and he's just like talking to me. He's like, yeah, 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 totally, uh, totally. I'm like, bro, go find one of your little celebrity crushes. You're embarrassing yourself. God opened doors. Someone say open. Who believes that God could open a door? Who believes that God could open up your heart? Who knows what you do now when God opens a door? What are we going to do? We're going to stand. And we're going to stand guard. What are we going to do? That We're going to be what? Brave. We're going to be what? What else? We're going to be strong. And we're going to do everything with what? This is how we steward open doors. I want you to stand your feet with me. Very simple, but I think it's actually apropos for what God is saying to you, dads, moms, sons, daughters, grandparents, grandchildren. I hear the Lord saying, I'm opening up some big doors. Who believes God's opening it? Now I want you to be a favor. You feel like God is opening, I don't know what, I just, I, I heard as I was praying, I just felt like God said, Mark, you share this message and I'll show the individuals what I'm opening up. If you see an area right now, it's in your marriage, your family, your work, your job, your kids, your relationship, your family, your neighborhood, your neighbors, if you feel like God is specifically wanting to open something up, I want you to lift your hands right now. Because I'm declaring the word of the Lord over you that God is opening that area. Hands up all over this place. We're gonna declare God's word over our life. You ready to go? So with your own mouth, I want you to say this with me. Say, in Jesus' name, this time like you mean it. in Jesus Christ's name, we declare you're opening up the doors of heaven, the windows of heaven over every square foot of my life, my family, my marriage, my business, my neighborhood, my nation. Lord Jesus, swing wide heavenly gates. Open up everlasting doors. Let the King of Glory enter in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. So right now, open up every closed relationship, closed heart, closed sickness, closed disease, closed a uh, person, open up in Jesus Christ's name. 
feel something shifting right now. You believe that God's open and come on, just give him a 10 second hand clap right now. Something's shifting. Something's shifting. There's a miracle house coming for somebody this week. I feel it. I feel like someone's looking for a commercial real estate. Property is opening up this week. Something's shifting right now. I believe God's gonna fight for our church. He's gonna open up opportunity for our church. Open up in Jesus' name. Open up in Jesus' name. Someone say, open up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I just want you to grab, I know it's sweaty, but grab, grab your neighbor's sweaty hand. We're gonna declare, every person is gonna get someone to pray for him right now. I want you to pray this prayer over your neighbor right now. Just say, in Jesus' name, we declare something shifted. You're breaking loose everything that's been stuck. You're opening everything that's been closed. You're softening every hard heart, every impossible situation. We declare the word of the Lord over our neighbor on our left and our right. Open up miracles, open up provision, open up signs and wonders open up your salt your light over their life in jesus christ's name darkness go lies go in jesus name king of glory enter in in jesus name you pray that prayer one more time just give a hand clap say amen who believes that god can do it this week it's a good week for a miracle. It's a good week for a breakthrough. It's a good week for God to show his strength. Father, this week, let it be recorded as a week that you opened up the impossible. In Jesus' mighty name. Last, last two things we do today. I felt like the Lord said there was some hearts that had felt closed towards God. You just feel like, I don't know, I have a hard time connecting with God can't hear his voice, don't feel like he's really speaking. I feel far from God. I feel closed. And I want to pray for you right now. There was 20 in this service last, last service. There's probably more today in this service. You want God to open up your heart today? Maybe you've never believed in Jesus Christ, or maybe you believe, but you just feel like distant from God. And you want to rededicate your life like a married couple would want to renew their vows. I want to recommit to Jesus Christ today. If that's you all over the room, whether it's a first time or rededication, I want God to open up my heart to Him. I want you to raise your hands. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to have you come to the front. I just want you to raise your hand. I'm going to count the hands. I want you to keep it up for me until I count it. Is that okay? I'll give you three seconds. Eyes closed. No one's looking. It's a holy moment. I want God to open up my heart to Him. I want to invite Him into every part of my heart. So lift your hands. One. I pray everyone that's supposed to respond would raise their hand on the count of three. Two more hands going up. I pray today is the day of salvation. Don't miss this moment, real high. Three, I wanna open up my heart. I wanna open up my, keep it up, keep it up. One, two, three, real high, real high. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Anybody else, 28? I wanna open up. 29, anybody else? Open up. 29, anybody else? 30. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's almost as though this word, open, was for you. I don't claim to be anything special. I'm flawed. I'm a human being. I have the same struggles you have, same, same uh, challenges in life that you face. But I'll tell you, I know when God speaks to me. And I heard the Lord say, if you would open up to him, you watch how he would show himself real to you. Those 30 people, this is the greatest thing you can do with your life, is say, not only is God real, but I'm gonna live my life for God. I'm opening up today. All those people with the rest of Ocean's Church, those online, if you're watching, write heart, H-E-A-R-T, or you can put a heart emoji in the chat on YouTube or Facebook, or you're watching on our website, just respond right now. I'm giving my heart back to God. He's opening up my heart today. 
Let's pray this prayer of invitation. We're going to invite God into your heart right now. You ready to go? Everybody pray with those 30 people. There's probably more, at least 30 though. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, today in a hot tent, I invite you to open my heart up. I want all of you to fill up all of me. Would you forgive me? Remove the shame, the guilt, the regrets of life. And today, soften my heart. Reconnect my conscience. Lead me, guide me, fill me with your wonderful Holy Spirit. I ask you, give me a church to call home. Give me a desire to read the Bible. Lord, teach me how to pray and give me real friends that know you and can show me your ways. In Jesus Christ's name, if you prayed that prayer, it'd be good to celebrate with those 30 people today. It's a lot of people at church. Come on, who thinks God's moving in a hot tent today? Mighty God, you guys are crazy. A bunch of diehards in Orange County. My mother-in-law was leaving, she's flying back to Boise, and she goes, Mark, I am just amazed that people would go to a hot tent for this. And when God's moving, it's like, He's moving. It's so good to burn calories too, right? Why you're enjoying Jesus. Hey, uh, last thing I wanna do, if you're sick today, maybe you're battling maybe a, a, a negative mind, a discouraged heart, Maybe you're going through a crisis right now, or maybe you have an addiction you want to break ties with. Maybe you just raise your hand and give your heart to Jesus and go, Mark, I would love it if you would ask God to heal me, encourage me, or set me free. I would say that doesn't make you weird. It makes you human, <laughs> honest. If you need prayer today in one of those areas, would you slip your hand towards me? Area of sickness or encouragement, or maybe it's a, something you want to break today. Just raise your hand. Doesn't, doesn't again, just be honest. If someone's hand is up next to you, you can hold their hand. But if if you don't have your hand up, why don't you put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder? The Bible says we lay hands on those that are in need, and God would respond. It said the prayer of faith would save the sick. It says to lay hands on those in need and watch them recover. So go ahead and lay your hands on them right now. Pray this prayer with me. Say in Jesus Christ's name, you said, lay hands on them and you would do the work. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak life over every area, emotional, physical, spiritual. Heal, encourage, deliver. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, let today, June 23rd, be the beginning of a season of health, freedom, and light. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And everybody that loves God and believes He's doing it, shout out a good amen. Hey, don't miss next Sunday. Grab a seat, grab a seat.